Inside, we have a little bit of extra power here. This is nitrous oxide. Well, I, I can't help but uh, comment on it. That's an explosive gas you have in the trunk of your car. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Show and Tell. Uh, I'm Dylan Therese, the co-founder of Atlas Obscura. And this is a series we started during this time when we're all experiencing a global pandemic and we are stuck at home. And we thought maybe this was a good moment to get in touch with people who are stuck at home filled with interesting things, who, who have wonderful stuff in their houses that they can share with us. So today, we are gonna be talking with Al Young. And Al is a lot of different things. Al is a, a, a race car driver, a dragster driver. He is a um, many decades long teacher and educator. And I believe he's also a Kung Fu master. That is a cool, cool set of things to be. So without further ado, uh, I would love to welcome Al to the show. Thank you for joining us, Al. Thank you for having me. All right. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say I know very, very little about cars and car racing. I only learned to drive uh three years ago, four years ago, I'm 37. You specifically do mostly drag racing, is that, is that right? Yes, I do, yeah. The idea is that you go from a, a, you know, standing still to very fast, very quickly, right? Because it's, yeah. it's a short track, is that part of the thing? A quarter mile, 1,320 feet. It, it imitates starting with a stoplight. Yeah. Two guys paired up together and they're gonna race. And initially it was whoever got to the finish line first won. And ET drag racing was developed that you can take your own car, hop it up anytime you wanted to. And then uh, the way that it was raced is you were paired up with another person and that other person, if they were faster than you, they had to give you a handicap. And if you were uh -huh. faster than them, you had to give them a handicap. And you wrote how fast you think you can go the quarter mile on your windshield. And then they would electronically figure out how much of a handicap you would take. So ideally, if both people were honest about what they put on their windshield. If you both left the line at the same time, you would both end up at the finish line at the same time. But it never works that way. Always yeah. one person is either fast, you know, you know, either quicker on the line or their car was tuned better and they were able to go exactly what they said they were going to go. Yeah. If you go faster than what you say your handicap was, then you're out. Unless the other person lied too. Uh, <laughs> I see. Oh, that's very interesting. Well, okay, so you are going to show me some stuff today. Yeah. About the world from your various worlds. So, I would love to see the the first thing you want to share with me and and uh, hear all about. Okay. It. This is a National Hot Rod Association uh, Wally, which would be equivalent to a, a motion picture Oscar, and it's awarded for national champions, uh, uh, division champions. This one is a special one. This is the Hall of Fame, mm. and. Um, We'll put this way, we're talking about an association that has almost 80 million people, a fan base. And uh, I was one of the first people that drove this kind of car to be ever inducted into the Hall of Fame. And I, I'm very, very proud of this. And uh, it, it, it makes me feel that, uh, uh, well, it gives me a great sense of accomplishment, you know, and, and to be recognized by your peers. It must feel very good to have sort of a, a confirmation of your accomplishments um, yeah. when maybe that hasn't been the easiest thing, or I don't know. I, I don't it hasn't know. been the easiest thing, which brings me to the next object. Okay, <laughs> great. Same, I was like, uh, uh, awarded this last year. And in the same year, several months later, I was inducted into my high school Hall of Fame. And that's my high school. And this is the one that I'm really proud of. <laughs> and, and in particular, because here's my high school transcript. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see it. Well, I graduated with a 1.6 grade point average. Okay, yeah. And even with A's and B's in, in, in auto shop and, and wood shop and metal shop, I, I still had a 1.6 grade point average. So you can tell how much I struggled. But I was able to uh, um, uh, finally graduate. I got straight A's to the community college and got into the University of Washington. Majored in English literature. 
and, and you and you've gone on to become an educator. So I yeah. would love to hear about about that too. I mean, because that's a pretty dramatic transformation. What would you say to a young person? I'm sure you've run into people like this a ton in your teaching work. But what do you say to a young person who's maybe struggling with the same kind of things you struggled with, focus, attention, channeling their energy. How do you give them advice? I, I used to say, you gotta work your ass. You, you really do. It, it's a lot of work. It, it's never gonna be easy, you know? Um, and you just have to to accept that and, and get a kick out of who you are. I, I'd love to, to, to keep seeing the things that you're, you're sharing. What's another thing you'd love to? I went to Bonneville Raceway, you know, which is uh, at the edge of uh, uh, the Bonneville Salt Step Flats. You know, I knew the 20 miles from there, the Chinese <laughs> had uh, had finished their, their section of the railroad and they met at Promontory Point and there was a golden spike ceremony there, you know, and I just said, you know, this is great. Now here I am a Chinese guy, you know, r racing, r racing here at Bonneville and sure enough, I won that. This is an interesting story because I'm gonna show you two pictures. Uh, picture. One of the things that everybody seems to recognize is this picture. This is sure. the completion of the golden spike, and you notice that there's no there's uh, no Chinese in the picture. You know, yeah. even though half of the the railroad, the Central Pacific, was built by the Chinese, about uh, fourteen thousand of them. You know, but they were not there. Um, my parents, for the hundredth year anniversary of the golden spike, uh, they went there to represent the Chinese community of America, mm -hmm. and um, their friend Phil Choi was there to. Um, present a plaque and give a speech, you know, saying for a hundred years, we, we were finally recognizing the Chinese had done something. Um, at the last minute, they canceled him from the program. They said, we're not going to have you speak. Uh, John Wayne is here. So we're going to have him speak. You know, um, Good representative of the Chinese community there. <laughs> yeah. So, so they had to go back, you know, uh, very, very disappointed, you know, that, that they were not recognized. Um, last year, at the 150th anniversary of the, the Golden Spike, my sister, Connie Young Yu, was asked to speak there, and she represented. This uh, picture was in the New York Times. That's so, great. So there's a big difference here between the picture that was done 150 years ago, and we retook the picture. And these are all descended of people that work that they're on the railroad. These are all descendants of railroad. And my mother, I'm, I'm a direct descendant. Wow. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, uh, building, is that your newest car? Oh, okay. Uh, I, I built this car to go around the United States and do a Route 66. And uh, we ran, my, my wife and I uh, loved it. We went across the United States in this car that I built from 1973 from the Road Runner. And um, <laughs> we ran out of places to go in the United States. So we said, why don't we go to Europe? So we went to Europe. And the reason I went to Europe is because um, the largest car show in the world is in Europe. That's part of it. That's it's another part. a lot of cars. <laughs> it's over 20,000 cars and over 100,000 people go to it. And it's in Sweden. How does your How does your wife feel about all of this? So she, she's been she, along. She really wanted Oh, good. It's really something that. So yeah, I would love to. And we've been talking a lot about cars, but I would love to see, see some cars. Sure. Uh, and I'm going to ask a lot of foolish questions because I know very little about cars, really. So I'll probably <laughs> I, well, I don't I don't know my my Chevy from my uh, I don't even can't even think of from my Chrysler. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, you, I would love to see what you what you've got in your garage though, and hear. Okay, hear uh, first I'll, sh I'll show you where my race car is now. The car that you see behind me, directly behind me, is the car that I took to Europe, the one that I built, and that's the Plymouth Roadrunner. And uh, let me show you a few things about it. This is a very unique car. It took me longer to build this car than any race car I've ever built, and mm. I've built over five race cars. Okay, so I'm gonna flip it over here and so you can take a look what do you, at it. Uh, <laughs> what does it mean <laughs> to build a car? What do you start with? Everything on this car is customized, you know, and it's made for a particular reason. If you can, if you notice here, there's two ignition boxes. There's two coils. I'm gonna trust you on that. <laughs> I have two fuel systems. 
I have two cooling systems. What? I have two electrical systems. <laughs> how, how does that all fit in the normal space of a, like, shouldn't, I feel like all the room is taken up by one system. How is there space to have two of everything? You just make it work. Wow. I'm talking about bringing a car across country, you know, and, and, to, and to other countries uh, that's over, almost 40 years old, you know, and, and uh, so I had to go through my head every th possible thing that could break down. You know, so I just went through it and, and I visualized these horrible places where I can possibly be, you know, side of the road, rainstorm, hail and going down. And I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with the car. So every time I thought of that, I, I, I did something to the car that would anticipate the problem. So I kind of patterned it after an airplane. You know, the small, you know, single engine airplanes, they, everything's redundant. You know, so you know you can't have your motor go out of a single engine airplane. You know, you can't have the emissions. So they have everything double. So I did the same. Thing. You know, wow! Why don't they just build all cars like this? I want a car with two of everything, so that when it breaks out, just flip the switch to the other side. <laughs> you must love. You must really love working on cars. It must be really fun to sort of have these kind. I can just talking to you. I can hear the the excitement and the joy you got and even kind of figuring this problem out. It, it yes. Was... <laughs> it was a real challenge, you know, and you know, there'd be, there'd be times on, on one section and one part of the car that I'd be there for, for weeks thinking, it, you know, and, and, uh, you know, but it, it, I really enjoy it. Yes, you're right. <laughs> yeah. That's what a nice thing to get to spend your time doing. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Well, Thank you so much for showing us all of these incredible things and, and telling us about your life. It's been great to have you. Thank you so much. It's really been fun, you know, and, and uh, uh, talk about uh, getting me animated in this, <laughs> in this period of time <laughs> and, and, and our, our, our new world. Here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a good uh, rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching Show and Tell. If you have suggestions for people we should consider uh, talking to in these videos, let us know in the comments. And if you enjoy watching these as much as we enjoy making them, please consider becoming an Atlas Obscura member. By joining the Atlas Obscura membership program, you are becoming a part of this incredible community of like-minded explorers, and you're supporting our mission to share wonder in the world. So consider becoming a member, and as always, also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.